you and I are going to make an impact crater. Vasco Toys. Action figure, dioramas, and props. Whenever I think about impact craters, the first thing that comes to mind is Dragon Ball Z. Here's a great example of an impact crater from the manga that will serve as inspiration. I also want to give a shout out to my friend Ron at Lawless Studios over on Instagram. In my opinion, he's one of the best terrain builders in the action figure community. And he's someone that I frequently turn to for inspiration when I'm doing a project like this. He's definitely worth a follow on Instagram. As I've been talking, I've been working on gluing layers of XPS foam on top of each other with low temperature hot glue. This is 2 inch foam that you can find at Home Depot. Now it's time to shape the overall rock formation that we're going to carve the impact crater into. I'm using my trusty handheld hot wire foam cutting tool, a 3M mask to keep myself safe, and also a fan to get some ventilation in here. What you're seeing is a time lapse, but I want to stress how important it is to go slow. I actually snapped the wire for my hot wire tool twice while I was doing this, which was super annoying. Most of our focus is going to be on the front of this piece, but I did want to sculpt some of the back as well, so I'm carving out the general shape that I want it to be. I am still going to sculpt the back, but it's not going to be nearly as detailed as what you see in the front where we're going to put the impact crater. One of the things I try to keep in mind as I'm doing this is that I don't want any of those flat portions of the edging of the XPS foam visible in something like this. As I've said before, square and rectangular pieces are not your friend when it comes to carving rock formations for dioramas. I'm going to carve most of the impact crater with an actual utility knife, but I am starting to shape that area where I think the impact crater is going to be with the hot wire cutting tool, just to give myself a little bit less work to do with the utility knife. Originally when I was stacking up the XPS foam, I left a gap that I thought I would use to carve the crater, and then I decided that I wanted to take a different approach, so now I have to fill that in. To do that, I inserted some foam into the gap, and then just used a sharpie to trace the area that I need to cut. Then I turned back to the handheld hot wire tool to cut the shape out that I just outlined with the sharpie. And I just want to do a quick test fit to make sure that this fits and it looks the way I want it to before gluing it into place. Everything looks good, so now I just have to use some low temperature hot glue and put these in place. So there are a lot of different ways that I could do the next step, which is creating an impact crater. What I'm going to do, though, is just use a brand new box cutter, and I'm going to start small and just completely go in sort of a spiral pattern until I get to the point that I want to. And um, you could probably do this with a hot wire cutter. You could do this with some other things, but I feel like this is the best option for this project. And also what I'm going for is if this is some sort of battle arena and you have a six inch figure, if they were kind of like slightly elevated and knocked into this thing, that would be a good spot for them uh, to, you know, sort of crater into. So I'm going to create a little mark just to tell myself like this right here, this little X is the epicenter of the spiral structure that I'm about to carve for the crater. Before I use the utility knife, I'm going to use a piece of copper tubing that I normally use as I magnetize my dioramas. This is just going to help me establish the epicenter of the impact crater that I want to carve with the utility knife. Now it's time to use the utility knife to make a series of angled circular cuts. I'm working the knife in a spiral shape that's going to really define the inner part of this impact crater. Now what I'm going to do is make the impact crater a slightly larger size every single time until I get the full perimeter of the impact crater that I want to have on the mountain piece. 
To make things easier on myself, I manipulate the mountain diorama in different orientations to make sure that I'm able to get the angled cut that I want for the impact crater. In addition to sculpting out the perimeter, I also want to carve in some striation marks that I think will up the believability of the impact crater because if there was a significant impact in this rock, there would be sort of radiating cracking marks that would go beyond the perimeter. Normally I wait till the end of the project to texture the foam, but I'm curious how this will look, so I'm using a ball of tinfoil to texture the impact crater portion of the foam. I'm not really satisfied with the way the top portion of this mountain looks, and I know my client wants this to be a very jagged looking piece, so what I'm doing is using the box cutter to create a more jagged look, and then I just take some tin foil again and apply that to get some texture on the rock formation to make it look more believable like it is rock. I decided I wasn't getting the look that I wanted on the cratering. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do instead is, and I started this here, you guys can see this. I've cut a bunch of little pieces, or I am cutting a bunch of little pieces that I can kind of place almost like a puzzle. Uh, where I feel like they look good and I start with the smallest ones and as I get further out I get get them to be bigger and bigger and bigger to cut the impact fragments I'm just creating some thin slices of XPS foam with my box cutter from there I try to create almost like pseudo triangular pieces that don't have hard edges so I want these to look like they are a little bit more random. I don't want them to look uniform. And carving the edges on an angle really helps to accomplish that. Once I have those pieces cut, I start applying them to the diorama using a little bit of hot glue. I don't want any stringing, so you don't want to overdo it. Although there is a balance because you want them to be very solidly secure in the piece. Here's a closer shot of how things are looking so far. Now we're at the part where we're really going to start seeing a difference as I apply these glued fragment pieces to the diorama. You might be wondering how far out I'm going to go with these fragment pieces, and that's really a matter of preference. I'm sort of using the perimeter that I carved at the beginning of this video as a guide for how far I should take these up, but if you wanted to extend it beyond that, I think you could do that as well. I don't know about you guys, but I really love the way this is turning out. You already saw me texture with tin foil, but now I'm going to use this rock that I found in my backyard. The tin foil is great, but what's going to be better than an actual rock if I want this to look like a rock formation? The striation marks that I carved at the beginning of this when we were doing the perimeter of the crater are coming through very nicely, but I want to add some more, so that's what I'm doing here with the box cutter. Remember earlier when I said I didn't like the way the top of the rock formation looked? Well, I still don't think it's jagged enough, so now I'm going to add in some more striation marks to try and fix that. I think it's important to remember that it's not just about the impact crater looking good. The whole rock formation needs to look good for the impact crater to be believable. Now that we've got that looking the way I want, the next thing we need to do is fill in those layer line gaps. And you guessed it, that means we need some lightweight wall spackle. Most of the time when I use this stuff, I use some kind of straight edge like an expired gift card. But for this project, I'm going to use a nitrile glove and just put some of this on my finger and apply it to the piece. There are so many striation marks and angles on this sculpt that I think using a straight edge would cause me a lot more harm than good. You'll notice there are some parts of this sculpt where I've got some big gaps between the layers. And that's either because they didn't glue down properly or because the boards were warped to begin with. But applying this wall spackle will make it so you can never even see these at all and completely eliminate that problem. Doing this step is really going to sell this as one solid rock structure that's had a major impact hit into it. In case you're wondering, if you didn't do this part, you would definitely still see those layer lines after you paint the piece, and that's just going to take away from the illusion. Now I just need to let that wall spackle dry, and then I can tackle painting this piece as part of another video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of this piece and the process that I used to get there.
The impact crater piece in today's video is part of a larger commission that I'm doing for a repeat customer. And I am going to have a separate video that shows the other pieces that are part of this as well, which includes a couple of other rock formations, a battleground, and a few other things. So be sure to check that out as well.